So let's talk about what it takes to create an Azure account. It turns out that it's quite easy. You simply go to azure.microsoft.com and you click on the Start Free button. When you sign up, you get $200 in free credit. And what you're really creating here is a 30-day trial. Now, once you create your account and you activate your trial, you'll get $200 to just play with Azure and create some services and try it out. But even after the 30 days, there's a free tier which you can continue to use. It's limited in terms of CPU hours, storage space, and the messages that you can deliver per day, but it is free. And by free, I mean completely free. There's no cost to it. Now, of course, you get what you pay for. Because it's the free tier, there's also no uptime guarantee and you're low priority and you'll have limited resources. So you'll probably be sitting on a machine that's shared with other people. And you can't use custom domains or SSL connections. But it's great for demos, tests, and doing development on. Now, when you sign up for your free account, you won't have to enter any credit card information. It isn't until you actually start to use some of the paid services that Azure will actually ask you for a credit card. And so this is a completely free trial. You can start up for free without any fear of suddenly being charged for some sort of hidden fee that you were unaware of. So with Azure, as I mentioned before, it's a pay-as-you-go service, meaning you, you choose what you need. The system uses per-minute billing, and there's no upfront costs and no termination fees. The pricing tends to be regional based upon the region or data center that you choose and you're hosting your services from, and there are special prices for startups and for academia. In addition, there are discounts for prepaid accounts versus paid as you go. The monthly charges range depending upon the services that you use and the capacity that you need. For example, for app services, these are the application styles we saw earlier where we create mobile, web, logic, and function apps. It starts at free where you can have up to 10 apps running on a single shared server with no SLA, which is perfect for testing. Then as you increase the SLA, add storage, or add CPU capacity, the price moves up. For the US central region, premium service with eight cores, 14 gigs of RAM, and 500 gigabytes of disk space is about $2.40 an hour, which comes out to about $17.86 per month. This is of course in US dollars. Virtual machines vary widely in price depending on what you need. And there's lots of options here with different CPU and RAM combinations and even different types of hard drives. For example, SSD versus traditional hard drives. Once you've used your $200 credit, then you'll need to pay for VM space. And it starts at about 0.018 cents per hour for one core with 0.75 gigs of RAM and 20 gigabytes of disk space. That comes out to about $13 a month for a 24-7 VM. At the high end today, we can, have, we can get a machine with 16 cores, 112 gigabytes of RAM, and 800 gigabytes of hard drive at $1.54 an hour, which comes out to about $13.79 a month. Again, these are US-based central region prices, and so as you change the region or the data center, the price per month will change. Next, we have SQL databases. Again, just like we saw with virtual machines, there's a lot of variance here based upon the performance and the amount of storage that you need. There's actually two different types of databases available. Single databases or isolated databases where you decide the scale and these start at about $5 a month for two gigabytes of storage. At the high end, you can get one terabyte of storage capable of processing 350 times the traffic. The second type of database is the elastic model where you're running in a pool this is slightly more expensive at the low end, starting at about $150 a month for 10 gigabytes of space and ending up at the $8,370 per month for 750 gig. So you can see that there's quite a range of pricings available to fit every need and budget. Check out the URL on the screen for full pricing details for all the services and offerings available from Azure. Now, if you've got an MSDN subscription, then it turns out that you can actually get monthly credits with Azure. In fact, up to $150 per month depending on your subscription level. In addition, the Dream Spark program also offers free Azure credits. These are granted per month and any services that you're billed against automatically draw from these credits before you get charged.